Hello, baseball and umpire fans, and welcome to The Leading Edge, where we talk with umpires about umpiring and look to cover topics on both sides of the plate. Joining me on today's episode is Baseball Saskatchewan Provincial Supervisor Scott Mills. On this episode, we look to cover the Baseball Saskatchewan Umpire Program, the 2017 Canada Games, and the time Trevor Drury got his jockstrap frozen in a bucket of water. So if you're interested in any of the above, sit back and relax. Get ready. It's coming. Hello, baseball and umpire fans, and welcome to the second episode of The Leading Edge, where we talk with umpires about umpiring and look to cover topics on both sides of the plate. First off, I have to lead this episode with saying thank you to everybody who has said some nice things about me and the episode specifically. It's been a long time since anybody's complimented me on anything besides my good looks, so I appreciate it. And I have to assume that since you're back, you have not had your fill with me. Get it? Fill with me? Well, what can I say? We've made it to episode two. I'm rather excited. And just like the Star Wars series, I promise you that every episode going forward is going to be better than episode one. Okay, I promise. No more stupid jokes. The only stew that will be mentioned here on out for the rest of the show will be potentially Stu Sherwater. The reason being is because we're going to talk about the Baseball Saskatchewan Umpire Program. And if you didn't know, Stu Sherwater is originally from Saskatchewan, okay? He's a big deal. He umpires in the major leagues. And you know what? We're proud of him. Everything he knows, he learned from us. So I'll take full credit where credit is due for all the work that everyone else has done. It's kind of what I do. Okay. I got some good and bad news going forward that I'll get out of the way quickly for all you avid, loyal listeners, you know, lifelong fans. There's been some changes to this show. I've taken some feedback, you know, the positive stuff and the stuff that nobody really ever wants to tell me, and I'm working on it. One of the things, unfortunately, here at Leading Edge Headquarters is that we've had to make some difficult decisions on, how do I say it, let's just blame... Or social distancing. Roscoe. Yep. We've had to let him go. We just felt that with the fast-paced changing of podcasts these days, he just couldn't keep up. And we made the difficult decision to let him go. Though on his record of employment, we did put that it was COVID-specific. This is simply so he can collect the CERB and really wouldn't be owed any money for the next couple months. We just figured if Air Canada qualified as a small business, then we should too. Okay, enough of all my fun. Let's get to the show because that's what you're here for and I am too. And quite frankly, my wife is yelling at me because I'm stealing all the bandwidth. So without further ado, I'm excited to welcome Baseball Canada Level 5 umpire and Baseball Saskatchewan Chief Provincial Supervisor, Scott Mills. Scott, I would like to welcome you to the show. Hey, thanks, Phil. Glad to be here. Thanks, Scott. I really appreciate you being the second guest here on The Leading Edge. You know, we're novel, we're new, we're getting it off the ground, so it's really nice to have a figurehead like yourself come right out of the Baseball Saskatchewan Umpire Program and help us out. So, Scott? Well, I should have been the first one, shouldn't I? If I was the top umpire in this province, I should have been the first one. Now, I agree. I should have went with Baseball Saskatchewan focused umpires, but I'll be honest with you, I went with my best bud, from middle school, we umpired all the way up. We got into the game together. I just felt like maybe I should get into the podcasting world together. That's okay. Jeremy's a pretty good guy, so I can live with it. Yeah, the one thing you do have on him, you do have size. So, you know what? You are a bigger man than him. Yeah, I probably got better hair, too. Better? Uh, he's losing his. I got a question about you later about your hair, so let's leave it for that <laughs> later, okay? All right, fair enough. So, Scott, you're the baseball Saskatchewan provincial supervisor. Let's get to it. Can you fill us in on some of your baseball resume? Sure, Phil. 
I started off as a kid playing baseball, just like most of us did. Loved it as a kid. I played until I was about 14, first year Bantam, and then there was no more team in my hometown. So I just kind of got away from baseball until I was a young adult, was a university student, would come home, play a little bit of fastball. I know that other sport that's kind of like ours, but not quite as good. Played that because that was the only sport there was, so I was still playing ball. Then got away from that for a while, played a couple of years of men's ball, and got into umpiring because, well, the town I was living in at the time in Alberta was short of umpires. At the encouragement of my dad, who was a baseball umpire at the time, and I was already a basketball official, I got into officiating baseball as well, and I've been at it for about 21 years now. Advanced through uh, Saskatchewan, through level one, level two, level three, just like umpires do. It's a little different then than it was now. Then in 2003, I moved to Saskatoon. was a really great experience for my umpire career because there was a lot of better baseball. I had a lot of great mentors instead of in, there's always struggles with some mentors in rural communities at times, but Got into Saskatoon and got into the national program in 2003. In 2005, I went to my first national championship in Tour of Europe, Quebec. From that point on, it's it's been a great experience since then. I've been to 10 national championships. Four of those have been senior championships. I've also been to a tournament 12 in Toronto. So that's a great experience as well. And then I segued into being a supervisor. And I've been to six national championships from 13U to 21U as a supervisor. Baseball has given me a lot over the years and if the opportunities are there, if you want to work for them. I've loved it ever since. Well, Scott, sounds like you have quite the resume, and I'd be interested to get into it in a bit. But you've already dropped a swear word on my show. You've said the A word, Alberta. But I'll give you a chance to defend yourself. Where in Alberta are you from? I'm originally from Vegreville, Alberta. I um, there for majority of my life. Took all my most of my schooling there, graduated from there, moved to Saskatchewan out of high school to go to university. And I kind of back and forth a little bit between was in Saskatchewan University, moved back to Alberta for three years to, to work, had a job. And that's where I got involved in umpiring was in Drumheller, Alberta. And then moved back to northern Saskatchewan and then into Saskatoon. I've been in Saskatoon ever since for the last uh, 18 years I've been living in Saskatoon. 18 years in Saskatoon. Well, you can tell just by your accent that you sound like you're from Saskatchewan because you say the Saskatchewan really well. So I think, you're, I think you're, you're deemed a local by now. So Scott, after having that many national championships, being to the T12 tournament, I have to ask, what do you love most about umpiring? Oh, there's a lot of things that I love about umpiring. Besides the, the, the social aspect and being involved with the game, I love the camaraderie and, and almost family of the game. And when I say family too, like, Umpire baseball runs in my family. My dad got me into it. He started, uh, then I got going. And then when my kids got old enough, my son, when he kind of stopped playing around the, when he was about 13, 14, he picked up umpiring. And then my daughter out of the blue one day said, dad, I want to try umpiring. She'd been tagging around at the ballpark with me and, and watching me umpire. And she wanted to try and both my kids are still at it. So it's kind of a whole family type atmosphere there. One of our goals here in the next couple of years, we want to try to do a three-generation umpire crew on a ball field. That would be a really neat experience. I've been able to umpire games with my kids, be able to umpire with my dad, but not all three generations at once. I say the family of the two, I really enjoy the camaraderie of my fellow umpires, whether I'm working here in Saskatoon, working in Saskatchewan, or working at a national level. I've made a lot of great friends and connections all over this country from this sport. It's nice to hear that you mentioned camaraderie and family, Scott, because I think that's really what the premise of umpiring is. Especially with COVID right now, we're all stuck in our house and we can't get on the diamond. And we're missing our friends and our colleagues. Scott, what do you miss most about not umpiring right now? I really miss just getting out and mingling and socializing, working with a variety of different umpires out there, working with players, education. I love going to a senior game and officiating and watching those guys play in the, the better levels of ball as much as I would love going and, and umpiring a 13U baseball game. And coaches and players, they don't necessarily know who I am, and I can help educate them and make them more knowledgeable about the game. And I love doing that. And I love working with those young umpires too who, who they kind of look up to you and they just want to soak in any little bit of help and stuff you can give them. It's just so much fun 
to be out on the diamond. Although a lot of people may not think that we have fun or that officiating is fun, a lot of us do it because we love it and we have fun doing it. Are there times that it's not fun? Yes, there is. But most nights, I can come home and say, I enjoyed my night out on the ball diamond. Hearing education, the word education out of a teacher's mouth, we have to believe it, right? You bet. If we're going to talk education and programs, I think this is a great segue into the concept of the Baseball Saskatchewan Umpire Development Program, one that you technically oversee right now as the Baseball Saskatchewan Provincial Supervisor. Would you be able to share with us what the purpose of the program is? I would love to. I am very proud of our Baseball Saskatchewan Umpire Development Program. From what I inherited from my predecessors and the people who've been involved since I've been involved, and I've been involved on a provincial level as a zone umpire director and a executive member, assistant provincial supervisor, and I've been involved for, for the last 12 years or so. Just to see how our province is growing and meeting the needs and training our officials is phenomenal. I really saw a lot of that, especially when COVID uh, broke out here and we started to bounce around with our executive. How are we going to get umpires ready and registered this year is the core group of people that we have that are invested in our program all jumped on board and said, let's get this done. And we are one of the first provinces in this country to have some sort of formal training and registration for umpires in our province so that when we do get the green light to go, we can go. How do, how do we get that done? Like, what is the testing exam certification process here in Saskatchewan? Well, Baseball Canada has been trying to unify the entire country and how they train their umpires. Five years ago, the Baseball Canada Grassroots Committee was looking at how about we try to unify that. And they, made, they took a program that was originally developed in Ontario for their level one and two umpires. We took that and started to use it along with other provinces and we took it and made it Saskatchewan. So we made all the materials Saskatchewan based. Our level one program is a two year program. So in their, they have to be a level one for two years. And then from there they can move on to level two, which is a three year program where they learn different aspects of the game. And we decided to, to take it and break it down like that to make it more manageable. Because one of the biggest complaints that kids had when they went to the umpire clinic was, A, it was too long, and B, it was boring. So we wanted to try to compartmentalize a bit more of that information so they're not being bombarded with a ton of information and break it up over a couple of years. There are some pros and cons to that, obviously. I think what we are seeing now, though, is umpires are especially young kids who are going on the field they have the nuts and bolts and they can start to build upon all the other little aspects and more complex nuances and skills on the field and learn as they go by tapping other more experienced people to help them out and I think that's our developmental program has really stepped up. So we want to see more umpires getting into the level three program. That's where we're focusing now. We've got lots of umpires working through level one and two. And I think we're starting to see the fruits of our labors. And because now we're in our second cycle through our level one and two program. I, I'm really proud of, of our group here and how it started with Rocky Nickel. We wanted to see an improvement in the quality of umpires coming out of this province. And when I started in Saskatchewan about 18 years ago, the quality of the umpires coming out of our program to the national program was not of high quality. Saskatchewan was not well respected on the national stage for the quality of umpires that were going to national championships. Been in the game 20 years plus, but I can still remember sitting back in the clinic in those early days going, oh, this is painful. I think it really has changed here in Saskatchewan. And you had mentioned that there has been some changes to our program and we weren't well respected at one time. What caused that change or who was maybe that change driver? I would say Rocky Nickel started that. Uh, Rocky has been an umpire for a long time. Actually, just, just to give him a little plug, he was this summer he'll be inducted into the Saskatchewan Baseball Hall of Fame as an umpire. He I heard a, a rumor about him. Him. Yeah, I, you probably heard a rumor about him. I heard a rumor about him. About him. I heard that he had... He was the first umpire to ever eject Jesus from a game. I don't know how true that is, but I heard that he's been around that long. Yeah, I, I wouldn't surprise me. He, uh, <laughs> he's been around since uh, way back when God was a cowboy, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but Rocky decided, I uh, think he started the whole pro process of 
trying to improve the respect and the quality of umpires coming out of this province. And he started with making sure that umpires weren't going to national championships once they're ready and developing a whole supervision evaluation clinic program. And then Rocky kind of started to go on. And then Corey Davis came in for a few years, uh, who's now back in Alberta, uh, to help continue the development of that program. And then Trevor and Rocky continued to go on and build that and so on. There's been a lot of development over the years to improve this program that now Saskatchewan umpires are very well respected on the national stage. This is our second episode, and this is the second time Corey Davis's name has been mentioned. I'm starting oh. to find a trend here. Corey, if you're listening, there's a number on your back, okay? So we might need you on the show <laughs> after you're two for two. But you, you mentioned supervision education here in Saskatchewan. There's been a big push for it. I know in recent years, one of the new things that we've done here in the province since 2013, I believe, is the mentorship program. Would you talk quickly about the mentorship program? Sure. We refer to it a bit more. It's a program contribution program. It's not, Mentorship is just a piece of it. Okay. And I think mentorship right now is a big buzzword across this country in the umpire world. So in Saskatchewan, this was a bit of a brainchild of Trevor and Rocky and myself where they just started sitting around a table and spitballing some ideas. And then it came to this whole idea of our contribution program. So how our program works is we want umpires to give back to the program. So all level four umpires in our province are expected to participate in this program. Now, there's a whole list of criteria and options that umpires can use to give back to our program. And it was actually the original list that we started to populate to finalize this program was four years ago on our last level three cycle. We actually went to the level three clinics where all our level fours were participating and said, what do you guys think would be good criteria for contributing to our program? So umpires, as they go through the season, they can mentor an umpire, they can recruit an umpire, they can go to a tournament and sit and watch two or three umpires and give feedback. They could be a course conductor or clinician. They could develop materials for education. They could develop videos. So there's a whole variety of different stuff. Now, what they can do is all those different types of criteria, they accumulate points. 20 is the minimum that we ask. Most umpires that are in a level four program are 25 and over. I think last year, the highest number of points we had by an umpire was 75. Some umpires are really good at mentoring. Some maybe are not so good or don't have those opportunities. So there's other things that they can do. And a lot of provinces across this country, when I go to a national meeting, they want to know what are we doing here? Because they want to develop something like this for their province. And a lot of provinces are trying to create a program similar to ours to be able to encourage umpires to give back to their program. And I think that has really helped our program here in Saskatchewan to develop some top quality umpires. Scott, this is fantastic. And I really believe at this time it deserves a round of applause because really over the years, there's been a lot of work put into this program. So you know what, for everyone that's developed this, here's a round of applause for you. But back to it, really it sounds like the theme that seems to be coming to it, to the podcast so far is the concept of family. Even though it's a contribution program and a give back, it sounds like we're just really building a big family. I know umpiring in Saskatchewan, that's what I really like about umpiring here is that it is a family. The province is huge. There is a lot of ground to cover, but the idea that I live in the northern part of the province and can relate to my umpires in the southern part of the province and right in the central and everywhere in between, I think that's one of the perks of umpiring in Saskatchewan, and I think that's what's made our umpires succeed long-term at the national championships, is building that family concept. I can't agree with you more. Being able to work, you could go to, you in North Battleford, if you wanted to go umpire a game down in Estevan, those guys down there would welcome you with open arms, say, hey, come and let's learn from each other. Cooley. Hey, let's have some fun. Oh, come on. Jeez, don't get him in this podcast. Oh, yeah, wait, no. wait. But I had to name drop. <laughs> if we're going to name drop, we need of to course. get, we need listeners Exactly. I think most of the umpires in this province are very welcoming. It is. It's like a, it's a large, I don't want to say brotherhood because I want females involved too, which means that there isn't, there family. is there, family. Yeah, that's what I'm a family, right? 
Yeah, I've been saying family here for the past... It's not a buzzword. I really think that over the past couple years, that is the transition, and I support the concept of female umpires. And I know that we'll say guys on the show, and I just want to put a plug out there that when we talk guys or, you know, umpire crews, we're non-gender specific. We really do open this up to anybody who wants to umpire. And I think if that's one that's one downfall of our program. Like I'm very proud of our program and we'll compare our program to any other umpire development program in this country. We even Ontario, Quebec, some of the big, the big provinces obviously have advantages over us, but the one weak point or one downfall of our association is we need to try to recruit some girls. We need some female umpires. And I want to applaud any of those female umpires. Like my daughter, for example, she umpires. I want to keep her involved because there's just so many opportunities for female officials. There's tons of opportunities out there. And I want to try to encourage that it's not just a brotherhood. It's not just a male. It is a male dominated now, but it doesn't have to be. No, there could be, no, we'd no. Li- I'd love to work on the diamond with a female official and see them succeed just as well as I'd like to see a male. And I think this speaks to the program in general, because I know here in Canada, umpire that we know out of Ontario by the name of Lisa Turbot, she's, yeah. World baseball involved, involved at different levels internationally. And even to get away from baseball, Canada, last year at the Little League World Series, an umpire by the name of Kelly Din was on the plate for the Little League World Series championship. Kelly, from what I read online and seen some of the interviews with her, she works NCAA, top tier baseball. Right now we're seeing females in the MILB rank. So it's, it's just a matter of time and it's just engaging. And I think there's lots of females out there who want to engage in our program. And if you want to get into umpiring, please reach out. Most certainly. Baseball has got to be a sport where eventually there is going to have to be a female in the majors. Like oh, there's, 100%. there's NFL, the NBA, they've all got female officials in their ranks. Uh, the NHL is not there yet. It's going to happen eventually, and I, I will applaud those days when they do happen. We even see it here in Baseball Canada, the transformation. We see the senior women's baseball team, three national championships that are devoted to female-specific. It's starting to pick up steam, and that's fantastic. We're talking national championships. Scott, how many have you been at? I have been to 10 national championships as an umpire. I'm almost been- needing three hands and... To count that. Uh, you, you do, because when I add my super, supervisions, I'm up to 16. I've been at six as a supervisor, plus a, one tournament 12, so that's 17 national tournaments. Excluding your tournament 12, is there a national championship that sticks out the most as your favorite? Oh, yes. By far, the Canada Games 2017 in Winnipeg is one of the highlights of my career. Who I was went on your there, crew? Brandon Strockey from Alberta. and. Okay. Peter Perot from Manitoba. They were great crewmates. We worked really hard as a crew. Probably what really stands out, there were two games for me that stood out in that tournament. The first game was, it was the last game of the round robin. It was Manitoba versus Ontario. The winner of that game would claim first place in the B pool. I was originally scheduled for the plate for that game. And they moved it from a satellite park to Shaw Park downtown Winnipeg where the gold eyes play now that ballpark is as close as most people are ever going to get to a pro ballpark it was that beautiful of a ballpark so I worked the plate for that game there were 1700 fans in the stands and Manitoba ended up winning one to nothing and they scored the winning run in the seventh inning it was a phenomenal ball game but that wasn't the biggest highlight two days later I was selected to work the semifinal plate, Manitoba versus Alberta in Shaw Park. And there's Alberta again. Again, you got to say yeah. it. I know, hometown hero oh, here. Oh yeah, I'm a Saskatchewan boy. Uh, I'm no longer I, an Alberta boy. Fair enough, fair and enough. It, so I was selected to work the plate for that semifinal. There were 3,500 fans in the stands at Shaw Park on a Saturday afternoon. And it was a beautiful day for baseball. Manitoba wins two to one and it was a tight Alberta had the winning run on the bases in the seventh inning that's probably the one game that really sticks out in my mind that I've been on the field for it's the biggest crowd I've ever been able to umpire in front of you can't simulate that game like those are experiences that you have forever that's the beauty of umpiring you go you have that experience no one can ever take that away from you and no. Got to plug Saskatchewan in that tournament because doesn't Saskatchewan 
crawl out and become gold medal champions of the Canada Games that in 2017? Was, they did. They won the gold medal. They, uh, they beat Quebec in the semifinal, and there were a couple of great plays in that semifinal. In the gold medal game, it was Saskatchewan versus Manitoba, and there was almost 8,000 people crammed into Shaw Park. There's another little cool story from that gold medal game. After the bronze medal game, all the umpires, we went out to the outfield and got our picture taken in front of the Canada game signs. Yeah. There were 16 umpires at that tournament. As we walked down the third baseline back into the dugouts, all the fans on the third base side were all applauding as the umpires walked by. Like it was just, it was a real surreal kind of experience. Very classy. And a lot of those, and a lot of those fans on that third base side were Saskatchewan fans. Again, that's the family here in Saskatchewan. We're really privileged. We have really good baseball, and people take it seriously. And it's proving on the national stage. They're winning tournaments, and that helps make us better umpires. Oh, it does. And even if you get up to, we've got a really good 18U AAA league here in the province. It's a provincial-wide league. There's some good senior baseball in this province. And even get up to the WCBL, which doesn't necessarily fall under our baseball Saskatchewan umbrella, but we have baseball Saskatchewan umpires that work that league. It's pretty good baseball. Like we don't often see, pit, especially pitching, like that in any of our local baseball. It's nice to be able to work that high level of baseball to help us to improve and get better as umpires. Right. And not to give players and coaches and everyone all the credit, but I think having good umpiring makes baseball players better. Oh, it does. Look, take a look. The only Canadian umpire in the major leagues right now is a Saskatchewan umpire. His name is Stu. Stu. Stu Sherwater. This is an amateur-only podcast, so Stu, you're going to have to work your butt off to get on it someday. Okay, let's move on. You have something that's special. You do have the T12 tournament. Jeremy, on our last show, he says one of his goals in umpiring is to work to a T12. Can you just give us a quick synopsis of your experience at T12 and maybe how it differs from the traditional, typical national championship? Sure. T12 is, it's a great experience. It's a huge learning experience. The baseball is a little different. They are really good baseball players. They're some of the top college eligible baseball players in this country. But there's not a lot of pressure on the umpires from the player and coaches side. What is really awesome is you get to work four person umpire system. And it's a learning ground for that. And they use it a little bit to help as a stepping stone for some international baseball for identification purposes. Now the T12, it's a tournament I had a lot of fun at. It's, it's fun just to walk out onto the field at Rogers center and just look up and say, this is where they play pro baseball. It's huge. And it is so cool. The, the year that I went, the umpire's dressing room was the visitor's clubhouse. Okay. The Baltimore Orioles had just finished a series of the blue Jays. We walked into that dressing room and all the name tags for all the Baltimore Orioles was still on all the lockers. So we all got to pick kind of, okay, who's our favorite Oriole player and pick his locker. And just to see the clubhouse and just to, to go in that atmosphere and meet, meet, you get to meet a lot of your idols too. Like if you're a Blue Jays fan, Jesse Barfield and Lloyd Mosby are two of the biggest, most genuine hearted guys around. I sat down and talked baseball with those guys for oh, a good couple hours, just individually. A couple innings, I sat behind the backstop, and I had Roberto Alomar sitting behind me. I had George Bell sitting to my left, and Sandy Alomar Sr. sitting on my right. And just to sit there and talk baseball. It's just a really great experience. And then the umpires were all very collegial and there to help each other, educate each other instead of like on a national championship scale for example you sit in the locker room and you get your debriefing and stuff at a t12 the supervisor in between innings they'll walk right on the field and help you with your positioning and tell you where to go or and then after the game you can come out on the field and they'll talk about certain plays and where you should have moved and where you can be and it's a big educational piece and i found it really huge for my supervision because we don't do a lot of four-person mechanics so having that knowledge helps you to educate your umpire crews for your medal games and your semifinals. When you start working four-person system, you can educate those umpires a little bit better. 
on how to do that, how to do the mechanics and where to be and so on. But T12 is, it's a lot of fun. It's a great experience. A lot of great people, both on the baseball side and on the umpire side. I would love to go back to another one. You talk about wanting to go back to another one. Do you have any goals as an umpire? One of my goals and one of my goals I've always said I was, I would love to work an international tournament. I know the clock is ticking on that. I'm, I'm a little bit beyond the window of age where they're starting to look for those umpires. I don't have any pro experience, which seems that the WBSC is starting to look more at younger umpires, guys who have pro experience like Aaron Roberts and Keith McConkey and Trevor Grieve and Corey Dalton and a lot of these guys, Stephen Gomes, who are working these international tournaments now. They're all super good umpires. More, I think more for me for a goal now too is just keep working what I'm working. Perhaps now I can focus a bit more on the developmental side, like a, becoming a master course conductor so I can teach and instruct course conductors, be a lead supervisor at a national championship. Those are some of the goals now. I still have that lofty goal. I'd love to do an international tournament at some point, but the reality is that's probably not going to happen for me now as much as I, I'm disappointed to admit that. I know that window that window was passed a little bit for me, but now I can focus more at the on the Canadian level and the Saskatchewan level about what can I do that might be a little bit more realistic now for myself. We talked about this in our last show. You really only have a lifespan as an, as an umpire for so long. It's just the reality. When we go to these national championships, we see the same crew members over and over, and I think that's what makes the family fun. It's almost a generational of umpires, and you work your way up through. I got to compliment you on accepting your goal and having that goal, but also accepting to say, maybe I can branch off and be stronger in somewhere else too, and keeping that program alive and well. Yeah, you, you'll often see that too. Like I know you're going through the same, you're at a little bit of a different generation of umpire than I am. Whereas you now at some of your tournaments are seeing a lot of the same umpires at certain tournaments. Whereas I have, there's one umpire from BC, Steve Boutang, who out of my 17 national championships that I've been to, him and I have been at, at 12 of those together. Oh, wow. Either as, either as both as umpires both as supervisors or as an umpire and one of us a supervisor, one's an umpire. So we, we've been at 12 of those 16 national championships together and he's become a very, very good friend of mine. You know, that's kind of crazy when you think of it, you know, over the past 16 years, how many years you've been doing it, that it's almost just a reunion every year to get this chance to see my friends and see that family yep. and bring it all back together. And that's what I really enjoy about it. And that's what I'm missing right now. I've already highlighted that multiple times, but it's so nice to be part of that program that's what i think is the highlight of being part of the baseball canada umpire development program that that's why i like being a supervisor like too is if i'm not i know i can't go umpire tournament every year we got to spread that around i like giving guys opportunities as a print supervisor i get to have final say in who i send where i i want to spread that around i have to ensure that all the umpires are on the right paths of development and that we don't hold any back so that's why I like the super supervision side of it, because I probably, if I'm not on the field umpiring, I could put my name in to supervise somewhere, and I'll probably go supervise somewhere, nice. just because of, of the limited number of supervisors that we have in this country that can work at certain levels. That's why I love supervising, too. It's just, it's a lot more work. Supervising is a lot more work than umpiring. <laughs> I, I'll tell you that, it's a lot more work. And you're exhausted by the end of that tournament. But it is so rewarding to see umpires develop and grow. And just when they, you, you give them some feedback and they knock the next play out of the ballpark and say, hey, he did what I asked him to do. Or he took my advice. And that's, that's so rewarding as a supervisor to see guys out on the field starting to, to excel because you've helped them to get there. And speaking from an umpire perspective with no supervision experience, I will say it's also exciting as an umpire to nail that feedback that you give that you were given. It just shows that, hey, I can adapt, my game can change. I've never met an umpire at a national championship that wasn't there to really try to get better. So that's a kudos yeah. to the program and how it's designed. It's, it's something that we work to get, get to that point and instill across this country. 100%. 
Scott, let's move into another part of the show. I got some feedback, and people seem to like this part. So this part of the show is called 10 Questions. All right, shoot, fire away. It's very Ellen DeGeneres-based, you know, all that cool (laughs) daytime TV that I never get a chance to watch. What you're going to hear is I'm going to ask you a question, and if I like it, you're going to hear this sound. And if I don't like it, well, you're going to hear a... Let's get at it, okay? I want you to be truthful. No lies. We can get the car horn out of the way right now. I'll just go, Alberta. Alberta. Uh. <laughs> okay. You're eating a bag of chips. Ruffles or Lay's? Ruffles. Awesome. I love Ruffles. Ruffles got ridges, man. And you got some dip. It, it's delicious. No questions. Of We're on food. Are you a Tim Hortons or are you a Starbucks fan? Oh, give it to me. So I like it. I don't like that frou-frou, trendy crap. Oh, no, no, no. Caramel macchiato, extra caramel sauce, okay? Straight out. It's a treat. I'm a rural guy. You're one of those urban guys, so you get to kind of see those fancy stuff. I feel like such a big shot when I come in town drinking a Starbucks. Although, although I will say I will have a, a London Fog every now and then from Starbucks. I, that's one thing Timmy's does not do well. Fair enough. London Fog. So for all those ump- umpires that see Scott as a supervisor, think London Fog at Starbucks. There you go. You got a belt on, okay? Are you a patent gloss belt or are you a, just a plain black leather belt? Oh, I will often wear a patent belt on the bases, but I'll wear a plain belt on the plate. Because the the patent wears off on your uh, on your ball bags, so I will do both. I'm gonna give you a a boxing bell, yes, and a car horn, no, simply because I do it the other way. Uh huh. So, but you know what? Doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means you, we're not jiving today. Okay, are you a hammer or a point kind of guy with your plate mechanic? I'm a point all the way. Hundred percent. I love it. There's nothing better. That, 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 that hammer thing, that's for that other sport. I forget what it is. I don't even want to talk about it, Neil. I, start, I started as a hammer umpire when I first started umpiring, just like we train all our umpires to be, but eventually worked into the point. Just worked better for me. Fair enough. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad you're converted to the right side. Speaking of conversions, are you a Star Wars or a Star Trek fan? Star Wars all the way, baby. See the Star Wars poster there behind me in my office there. Rogue so, One. You should see my classroom at school. It's got Star Wars bobbleheads and stuff all over it. Okay, you're going to a concert. You get two options. Are you picking Bruce Springsteen or John Bon Jovi? Oh, Bon Jovi. You got to go with the rocker. Although, you know, that would be a tough one because the, the boss would be an awesome concert too. I, I don't know if I – can I pick to go to both? Okay. <laughs> That's a hard chance. That's a hard, that's, sorry, hard, that's a hard question, but for anybody out there, Scott is living on a prayer, okay? He's going Bon Jovi, and he's the boss. Okay, yes. you're getting dressed for a game. Do you pick a Nutty Buddy or a traditional banana cup? I switched to the Nutty Buddy about three years ago, and I won't go back to the banana, ever. Yeah, we're talking about Scott's junk. That's right, that happened. Got to protect the junk, man. Got to protect it. Nutty buddy. So we're going on the field. You have stuff in your pocket. Are you putting gum or sunflower seeds? Gum. I'm a gum guy. I love the gum. Blow a nice big bubble. That really shows who's in charge out there. You got to take the game by the junk. And and a a little tip out there for our young umpires there. You're chewing gum while you're on the plate. If you take a ball off the face mask it helps keep your teeth from rattling together you learn something every day straight from the educator okay personal question long time coming but who's better looking the current provincial supervisor or the past provincial supervisor well i I, i'm gonna be biased it's got it's got to be the current provincial supervisor because i've got perfect hair every single morning awesome i'm gonna give you a just because I'm trying to throw in a little bit of suck up points out there and you talk about your hair. <laughs> you talk about your hair. This is a question I have to ask outside the 10 questions. But our last, last guy had to answer 10 questions. It was traditional mask or hockey style mask. And he said traditional mask because he didn't have the hair. 
And he said, the only way to wear a hockey style mask is if you have great flowing hair or you have no hair. How do you well, don't tell Ron Chuchik that? Well, that's but that's why he wears the hockey style mask. He has yeah. great looking hair. It, it's smooth and baby like all day, every day. So smooth as the baby's butt. Smooth as the baby's butt. We're talking about the former provincial supervisor. Who is that? The former French supervisor who recruited me was uh, Trevor Drury. He kind of grew me for a couple of years. Oh, no, maybe he's trying to get back at me because a funny story about uh, Trevor Drury is when I was way back when I was breaking into the national program in the early 2000s, our senior Father's Day tournament in Saskatoon was our evaluation tournament. And we used to, we were known to have a little bit of fun and pull some practical jokes and stuff at uh, these tournaments. And Terrence Field in Saskatoon had probably one of the best dressing rooms in the entire province. And we had a fridge in that room for keeping our beverages cold. And well, it had a freezer in the top of it. So during one of our many rain delays, and those of you who are listening who have umpired the Father's Day tournament know that for like 10 years in a row, it got rained out. So during one of our many rain delays during the night games, Drury had gone out to enjoy some beverages with friends and he was done for the day. And while well, we took his jock strap and we put it into a container, filled it with water and put it in the freezer. And he came to work a game the next day and his jock was in a block of ice. I think he wanted to get back at us at me for that. And that's why he recruited me now that I'm stuck with the Prince of Supervisor job. So we start the show by talking about Scott's junk and we're moving on to Jury's junk. But you know what? It's all fun and games. Until someone's cup is in a block of ice. That's a good one. I have never heard of that one. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if we should... Drury's new nickname could be Blockhead. I don't know where we go with it, but, uh, you know, something fun with that. Thank you for sharing that story, Scott. I think that's what makes the camaraderie in the family all that much better is we can pull these practical jokes and get away with it. we got to have fun out there, too. Now, before we go, are there any local legends that have inspired you or maybe you want to send a shout-out to? Well, one local legend, and I didn't actually get to know this gentleman until, oh, probably about six years ago. He didn't, he was already gone from the umpire program when I started to get involved. And this gentleman is Len Bell. Some of you older timers may have heard Len, the name Len Bell. Len Bell was an umpire in the national program and stuff for a very long time throughout the 80s. Trevor Drury will know Len Bell. Len Bell is one of the founders of our current Baseball Canada umpire program. And he, his mind for baseball is just phenomenal. I got him more, I know him more when Saskatoon started to develop their, they developed an umpire mentorship program for their 11U umpires. I got to know him, I got to sit down and get to know him and talk baseball and stuff with him a lot uh, when he got involved with that mentorship program. And uh, he's kind of our, I'd say he'd be our local legend. He's a, he's a member of the Sasport Hall of Fame, uh, the Baseball Saskatchewan Hall of Fame. Uh, he's also a lifetime member of the Saskatoon District Baseball Umpires Association. So definitely a local legend uh, there is Mr. Len Bell. There you have it, everyone. Today's local legend, Len Bell, Saskatoon native who helped inspire and develop the Baseball Canada program into what it is today. Well, this concludes our show, Scott. I would like to thank you for coming on, sharing with us the Baseball Saskatchewan Umpire Program, your personal experiences, and your goals as an umpire. It was, this is a lot of fun. Before you go, do you have any parting words for us? No, I just hope that, uh, I'm all hoping that we all get back on this field here soon, and if we cross our fingers, start of July is right now when we're looking. So uh, hopefully we can follow along uh, with what Manitoba's doing and other provinces are doing, and let's get back on the field and having some kids play some baseball. That concludes this episode of The Leading Edge, where we talk with umpires about umpiring and look to cover topics on both sides of the plate. Join us in our next episode, where we sit down with MILB alumni and current WBSC umpire, Aaron Roberts. But before you go, we would like to leave you with this. It doesn't matter how many times a coach asks you to watch for a balk. It's not a balk until you decide to call it. Take care, everybody, and stay safe. <laughs>